good evening, good morning, good afternoon. It's time for an hour with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm so glad you're here. I'm here. Jesus is here. We're going to have a great time with the Lord tonight. I can just feel it. like Jesus because he sticks closer to you than a brother and he goes with you through every trial and every victory of life and he has promised to never leave us or forsake us and I'm so glad I need that I need to know that he's always there through every road every path we take in our lives and I'm just so glad to know that he, he knows me and you better than we know ourselves. And he continues to love us 
with an everlasting love. What a wonderful God he is. Praise God. Well, how you doing? I uh, saw people tuning in from all different parts of the world. That's always exciting to see. I wish I could greet each one of you uh, personally when we do this program, but we want to get on with things, and so um, not able to do that, especially on a week-to-week basis. Uh, pray for uh, Liz. She's under the weather tonight, not feeling well at all, and um, not quite sure. This just hit her last night so quickly, and so I'm kind of flying solo tonight. Um, so lift her up when you think of it, that God will touch her body. She's got a lot of uh, bronchial problems and a, and a fever, and we just want to get that all fixed really fast. I'll tell you what, I've done a few of these programs without her, and I way like it better with her. She puts me at ease with all the stuff that she does for the program during these 60 minutes that we're live, and uh, I really appreciate that. She's been a great uh Floor director, producer, whatever you want to call it. She does a great job, and I miss her tonight. She's just out there and into a bedroom, <laughs> but I told her to take it easy, and, and I'll get through it this evening. We had a wonderful time in Amarillo just a few days ago for a worship conference there. Got to reconnect with a buddy of mine, Bob Fitz, who I haven't seen for probably 20 years, and we both marveled at how much water has gone under the bridge. Don't like that at all. But that's the way it's been, and time seems to fly faster as you get older, doesn't it? I think it does. Um, but we had a great time together, and um, give God glory for every good thing that he did. We certainly felt his presence through the sessions there on Saturday and Sunday, and uh, it was just really good. Hey, remember to lift us up as we're preparing in three weeks to go to South Africa. Um, I think I'll be doing nine or maybe ten different services there in about a, let's say, 17-day period. So it's going to be uh, quite demanding physically. Another reason to lift up my wife so that God can strengthen her and prepare her for that journey. I do have uh, a friend down there who's going to assist us. He'll be coming with me to each of the three cities. We're still putting together a couple of more churches, and when we have that uh, itinerary all finished, we will be posting it on Facebook. So those of you in South Africa, I hope, can make plans to join us in either Johannesburg or Durban or Cape Town. We will be in those three areas. Um, ministering those concerts. So mark your calendars. It's between the 3rd of, and the 20th of November. Um, more details coming as we uh, solidify things and get that all wrapped up. Hey, next Saturday, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, the 22nd of October, I'm going to do another special request uh, a service or show, uh, whatever you want to call it, It'll be Saturday morning in, in America at 11 a.m. Whenever that is for you, check that out. But this is a good chance for you to write down the favorite song that you would like to hear. doesn't have to be one of mine. Matter of fact, I'm fine with it not being one of mine. If you have an old favorite that you haven't heard for a long time, you can suggest that. If I know it, I will play it or sing it or both and uh, trust that it will be a blessing so we haven't done one of those special request days in a long, long time. It's way overdue. And we do have another Glory Partner Zoom meeting coming up. If you're a Glory Partner, I'm sure you've already heard from Pat. Uh, I think that is 3, 4, 5, 6. I think that's the 27th of October, a Thursday evening, I believe, 7 o'clock Central Time. If you're not a Glory Partner and you would like to be, we would love to have you join us. Just go to newglory.org and let us know how much you would like to contribute to our ministry every month. It can be anything God puts on your heart. And uh, then you can be one of those that have joined a couple hundred others who uh, faithfully support us. That's why this program is able to air every week, 
because of your faithful contributions. Many others don't uh, call themselves partners, but they send in gifts from time to time. Wonderful blessing that is. You have no idea how we count on those gifts from the people of God to help us continue to do this and to take his presence to the nations. South Africa trip will be very expensive, and we're trusting God to take care of all that because they can't afford us down there. They can't afford the airfare, let alone honorariums and lodging and rental cars and food and all that stuff. So uh, thank you for the gifts that you send so that we can take the presence of the Lord to the world. Hallelujah. All right. Are you ready to worship? I hope you are. in my life. I hope he is yours. Hallelujah. Last week, you may not or you may have known that we were not live last week. I actually had to count on one of our 
pre-recorded, never before seen, but pre-recorded shows, because if you remember two weeks ago, we had uh, some continual video dropouts and freeze frames and things just not doing well. Well, Robin and I did a test a few days after that, and it was even worse. And so taking the computer into the repairman didn't seem to produce enough results. And so we got a brand new system that we're operating in tonight. And Robin said we did a test just uh, two days ago, I think. And he said, hey, this is the first time I've ever gotten an excellent signal. Uh, the light's always been yellow. This time it's green. And so that was a good sign right away. So we're running with a much better processor and a new computer and your gifts have helped us do that, believe me. Uh, not, a, not a cheap uh, replacement, but it's important to have the best signal that we can have for you, our folks at home who are worshiping with us all over the world. So I hope that we've got just a sharp, great sound and video picture for you tonight. I really do. And I think we do. It sounds uh, good on this end, but I can't really tell <laughs> over here. All right, praise God. So I wanted to give you that update. We weren't live last week. We are this week. We will be next week and the week after that, and then we'll be showing some other pre-recorded shows while we're in South Africa. If I'm able to do any video uh, live stuff from, from Africa, I will surely do that, but we can't count on that from there to here. So uh, don't worry, though. The program will go on as... As scheduled, and you'll see um, stuff you have never seen before. It, I like doing nothing that's old or rerun. Every show has been something that has been fresh, and that's the way it'll be next week, too. All right? Praise God. That's enough of commercial time. <laughs>
a spiritual song that I sang at the uh, direction of the Holy Spirit many years ago and I recorded it as an instrumental but never sang it goes like this be still my soul and know that the Lord is your God That the Lord is your God. Be still, my soul, and know that the Lord is your God. That Jehovah is God how before his throne in humble adoration worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness, exalt his name and magnify his wondrous love. Be still, my soul. Be still. Soul. 
still and know that he is God. Amen? So much noise in this day and age coming at us. So much confusion. So much demand for our attention. So many distractions. The word says be still. <laughs> be still. Be quiet before the Lord and listen and meditate on his word and fellowship through worship with your Father. Mm. Praise God. I need to be still way more than I am. How about you? True story. Amen.
I have found the one whom my soul loves. I have found the one who cares for me. No one else can touch my heart like he does. For I have found my Savior's love for me.
none above the Savior's love. found my Savior's love for me. I have, but that's theologically a little shaky, and I'm the one that wrote the song, not oh, how he loves you and me, but I have found the one, because really, he finds us. We don't find him. He comes searching for us and taps us through the 
loving conviction of the Holy Spirit and draws us unto himself. You know, some people go through their lives, and I'm thinking of one couple in particular. They're well up in years, and I like them very much, and I tried to tell them about Jesus, and they just, well, it was the, the, the man. I haven't talked to the woman, but I think she's, of the same persuasion, just no interest. And you just, you, you just don't get it. Um, and I don't know what's in their background, but you shake your head and you don't push it because he asked me, you know, I just much more comfortable not talking about religion of any kind. And so I let it go. I'm still, I'm still friends see them once in a while. But it just bothers you to think, how can you reject such a great salvation? What is it in your background, in your history, in your family of origin, or in perhaps hope deferred that made your heart so sick that you don't want to accept eternal life? Because, friends, it's not over when it's over. <laughs> it's just beginning. There is eternity waiting for every single person who's ever breathed a breath. And it's either with God or without Him. And without Him is hell indeed. And I know I'm preaching to the choir. But He gave His life. What more could He give? And, of course, I know the enemy of our souls and those folks I'm talking about doesn't, doesn't want to relinquish them. So all you can do is pray. I, I, I power walk every week in my neighborhood about a mile and a half uh, route, and I double back so it's three miles, and I, I kind of go past a, a neighborhood that's close to where these folks live, and most of the time, as I'm walking past, I just lift them up. Lord, draw them by your Spirit. Convict their hearts. Let, the, let your love be shed abroad in their hearts. Let them understand the love of the Father. Praise God. I'm going to run out of time here if I don't watch out. It's just a quarter till. We've got 15 more minutes. I want to talk a little bit tonight about from my book, Chapter 7, actually. It's called Lou's Last Lullaby. Some of it goes with what I was just saying. As I, as I look back, 7 is such a perfect number. I'm sorry that I gave the enemy of our souls that chapter. Had I, had I known that ahead of time, I would have made him chapter 6 or something else. Not that it really matters in this occasion, but in this instance, but... Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the enemy of our soul and how it is so important. And you've heard me talk about this before, but I have to come back to it because we're living in an unprecedented time in the history of the world. When the intensity of the power of the enemy is growing on a regular basis, and I know by the Spirit that means the intensity of the Holy Spirit is growing too. And I look forward to Revival meetings and renewal meetings and evangelistic services and worship nights that start and don't end for days. And I believe that's coming. Because he is drawing us nearer, nearer, blessed Lord. But we have to be wise. First Peter 5, 8 says, stay alert. New Living Translation says, Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around neighborhoods, houses, bedrooms, living rooms, school rooms, business places, grocery stores, restrooms, sports stadiums. He prowls around like a roaring lion 
looking for someone to devour. Now I'm just going to read to you a little bit. I almost omitted this chapter from the book. I hate to even talk about our adversary and certainly do not wish to draw any attention to him whatsoever. Paul wrote much about the Christian walk, but very little was said about the creature who Paul said masquerades as an angel of light. But I do stick my head in spirit but if I do stick my head in spiritual sand, it won't change the fact that Satan or Lucifer, as he was formerly named, is a present enemy who, as warned by the scripture mentioned above, is on the prowl and not giving up. I'm a firm believer that if we do not know or understand our enemy, we will never defeat him in battle. Did you hear what I just said? If you're not totally aware of his ways, he will sneak in the back door and trap you. The winners of wars throughout the ages have had cunning strategies to outsmart their opponents. They have studied them in detail in preparation for the conflict. The same must hold true for us as Christians. The work of Jesus at the cross has made it possible for constant victory over the one who will soon be crushed under our feet and has always and has already been defeated, whether we see it in this present day or not. Think about the last sentence. Satan has been beaten, yet we often live as though he is still in power over an area of our lives. Why? Because he is the great deceiver. He is the father of lies. Sadly, he has mastered this craft to perfection. But knowing this important fact should make us constantly on the alert and always seeking the truth, which is Jesus. So in this chapter, and I better not put it away just yet because I'm going to read more from it. I talk about my friend Ken Gruen. I give some illustrations, three of them. I'm only going to mention two in the interest of time. Talk about my longtime life friend. He was my first boss. I was his first music director. We are brothers in the faith. He's like an elder brother. He's 10 years my senior. And we were on vacation together many, many years ago. And we played a round of golf. And I have always beat Ken and golf. Three of us used to get together, a mutual friend of ours, Paul Strang, and Ken and I, and we would have these three-day tournaments in different parts of the country. Mostly an excuse for fellowship, but golf was the main event. And I always won those events. I'm not that great of a golfer, but I was greater than my opponents, at least in these occasions. And so Ken and I are playing golf, and at the last hole, I'm seven strokes ahead and it's just a foregone conclusion that once again I'm going to beat him. And it was always friendly competition because we're just great friends first. And then, as I talk about in the book, on the 18th hole, I don't know what happened, but I think the Lord was saying, it's time for him to win. And I couldn't hit that little white ball to save my soul. And he made up all seven strokes plus one more as I missed the last little putt. And I was even laughing as I missed it. And I'm so competitive in my soul. I hate to lose at anything. But Ken won. And I couldn't even feel bad. I, I felt happy. He was raising his hands in the golf cart, rejoicing. And it was just a really fun moment. And a year later, I'm laying in bed now. A year later, I'm laying in bed early in the morning, probably 5, 6 a.m., and I start reliving this golf game. And I turn over from my right side to my left side or my left to my right. Can't remember. Actually, I turned over on my right side, yeah. And suddenly, the black face of Satan was no more than a foot away from my face. Can't put it into words. I froze as a dead man and he said this to me in as close to an audible voice as I've ever heard he said as I'm reliving this golf 
disaster on the last hole. He goes, that's you. You'll never finish this race. And then he was gone. And I broke out into a sweat right there in my bed. It brought fear into my spirit like you can't imagine. And I shook. I trembled as I processed that and got a hold of that. Story number two. Let's just leave that there for a moment. Story number two. On Christmas Day in 1998, my youngest son, Drew, had his brand new 21-speed bicycle and went out with his buddy to do his first official ride and traveling at a great rate of speed, locked the front brakes and the back brakes because we had not read the directions that that bike cannot have both brakes applied at the same time or they lock. And it threw my tiny little 12-year-old son many feet in the air. He landed on his little arm and a compound fracture came. Bone sticking out here, bone sticking out here. You can't imagine how shattered that arm look, looked. And I got a call from a jog, jogger who was going by and he said, you don't know me, but your son is laying on the pavement and is badly, badly injured. Went over to him, got him in the car, took him to the hospital. I'm really making this story go fast for the interest of time. Did surgery on his arm, put pins in with all kinds of metal plates. And he's got a famous scar there to remind him of that the rest of time, I guess. The next, when he came home a couple days later from the hospital, he's laying on the couch and I walk by the couch and God said this to me in almost as near of an audible voice, Satan sought your son's life yesterday but my angels were with him. And I began to rejoice because the enemy of our soul, you have heard me say it so many times, does one of three things all the time, every day, never takes a break, never wants to yield to our victory. He comes to kill and steal and destroy. If he cannot kill you, he will try to steal from you. He wanted to steal one of the three most precious things in my life, my children. Yet he has given his angels charge over Drew and over my family. If he can't steal, he'll try to destroy you, whether that means your occupation, your reputation, whatever, and it can be any number of things your life. And if he can't do that, he comes back around and tries to steal or kill or destroy. And it is a vicious cycle. Now when he, <clears throat> when the enemy tried to scare me literally to death in my bed and said, you will never finish this race. The one redeeming thing of this is my Knowledge of the Word of God. I'm not a theologian, will never pretend to be. But I remembered that He is the Father of lies. And so I reminded Him of that later on when I was gathering myself and chilling a little bit from that awful experience. By ourselves, we are no match for the enemy of the world that was cast from heaven because of his rebellious pride. But with the blood of Jesus covering us, we are a great match for him, and we have won the victory. So take heart. Be mindful. Let's read the first verse again. Watch out. Stay alert. For your great enemy, the great enemy, the devil... He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. I don't know where you are in your walk, but I know one thing. He is after you, and we better be aware of that. Through the airwaves, through Facebook, 
through uh, all of the internet, through relationships, even through the local church. There are churches that are not following and preaching the word of God. You better be mindful of that because the enemy is a roaring lion seeking if he can deceive you into believing that which is not the truth. He comes to kill you or to destroy you or destroy your mind. And he's not going to let up. If he can steal from you, don't you know he will? If he can help you to enter in to the worst investment of your life, you bet he will. Because he wants you poor and afraid. Poverty, stricken poverty mentality. That's the way he operates. More than anything, he wants to take you down with him. And yes, I fought a, a suicide spirit 14 years ago on one very dark night. But he did not win because greater was he who is in me than he who was not in me. And I know many of you have battled that very same thing. And I want to encourage you tonight. The Lord is with you no matter what befalls you. And if you fall down six times, You'll get back up, even seven. He'll pick you back up again. Continue to run the race with patience. And be alert and wise. As wise as serpents, the word says, but yet as gentle as doves. And he will see you through. Praise God. I hope that's meant something to someone tonight. You can make it. You will make it. We're all going to make it. And don't be afraid of anything. Walk with boldness to the next chapter of life. I know God has something new for me. I want to go forth with courage and confidence, not with fear. There is no fear in the love of Christ. He's given us a sound mind with love and power. Hallelujah. Thank you so, so much for joining us tonight. I hope God has touched you through the worship or the reading or teaching. And I hope that he is with you as you lay your head to rest or begin your day. Those of you who are watching in the morning, take Jesus with you to every place you go and he will give you peace that passes all understanding. Thanks for joining us. God bless you until we see you again here or there or in the air. Bye bye for now.
Thank <whistles> you.